listening to The Painkillers with Marquise and AD. This is your dose of getting rid of all your pain. We are going to talk your pain away. You man, you, you already know, man. <laughs> already it's so good know. to see you, man. man. It's good to see you too, bro. Man, I'm super excited, bro. Yeah, man. Like, dude, like our first one was hey, crazy. We got great man. feedback. Got great you know feedback. what I'm saying? I'm, like, you know. You know like, I'm reading the comments. And, exactly. You know, all that kind of stuff. I you hope know? the people you know went and got that prescription fill. Hey, you, know you know what I'm saying? saying? They gotta get the prescription fill. <laughs> exactly, you know? bro. So, yeah, so last time we talked about Well, you know, we you know, we kinda alluded to facts. Friendships yeah. and not, you know, walking with people and self prescribing and that type yeah. of situation. But we don't want to take away the importance of friendship. Absolutely. And so when you are a painkiller, uh friendship is a very important part big, part big, of that. Part. You know what I'm saying? It's a important part of business yeah. you know uh, relationships all of those things so man like i think today we really need to hone in on friendships man like hey let's do yeah, it patience I, I, <laughs> y'all already heard it so y'all better come on into the room man for sure we're getting ready to talk about some friendships and relationships man here we go keep it locked here we go <laughs> y'all so we are excited about today's podcast man to all my patients out there that are listening to us we're all patients is this your first time listening to us ad all patients Dr. We, are AD? All, we are all <laughs> patients all right we're all patients all of us man all of us are going through something been through something came through something we're all dealing with something and so today man we're going to be dealing with an amazing topic which yeah. i think is very important yeah and like ad already alluded to in the intro we're going to be dealing with relationships and friendships For especially sure. trying to cope with life get through life get through your your, your trauma yeah. your issues your drama all that kind of stuff yeah. my baby mama baby daddy <laughs> uh boss whoever <laughs> anybody that i don't like don't like <laughs> outside of yourself <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So, hey, we got somebody in the room today. Who yeah, man. Joining the, you know. Yeah, man. Like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I met this guy, man, a, a while ago, and you know, through our matriculation, we we both were serving in the same city, uh, yeah. doing ministry. To, you know, doing ministry not together, but doing ministry at the same time, Absolutely. which I call together because you know, if you doing ministry, we're on the same team. Yeah, it same should same be that way, but supposedly. Um, but man, I um, I really took a liking to this guy, man, and. Me and him just over the years we keep in contact, but we never really connected. Yeah. And man, in this season, man, we you know we we've connected on another level, man. So you know I you know I was introduced to him as Pastor Reggie, but Pastor I don't. Reggie. But, <laughs> but but I, I've I, I've got to know him as Reggie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, so we've asked him to come on today. And so patience, y'all got to welcome in the room. <laughs> yeah, man. The painkiller for the day. Yeah, Reggie. Reggie. <laughs> What's going on, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm glad to be on the show, man. I'm in here with celebrities, man. Hey, this man, is awesome, no, man. man, no, this no, is awesome, no. dude, man, <laughs> man. We so glad to have you, bro, and and and, and we really thank you for being a part, man. Take some time out coming out here to uh, sunny LA. LA. You know, I, I know it's yeah. such a struggle for you to get to LA. I know it's such a struggle. <laughs> no, <to get> <laughs> man. Listen, man, I'm so glad to be here. I've been in so many places, but. Um, God, dog, man, <laughs> LA is just, it's something else. Yeah, man. and you ain't even man. seen it yet. So, man, as yeah. soon as we finish up, you know, man, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm taking you on a trip. We wow, going on the road. <laughs> it can't be any more than what I've seen, Dude, man. It's like, but we are social distancing, guys. We yeah, are social distancing. Yes, we are. We are. We are. And these are the only people that I have literally <laughs> hung with or seen since I've been here. So, yeah, yeah. man. So, all right, so, man, we, you know, we're talking about this connections, friendships. Um, we know that or how I would like to depict it is the the people that can cause the most pain are the people that's the closest to you. Man, just rip the bandaid off. You know, let's do, straight, let's, dang, do like, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like, like, man, I ain't going to play with it. Right. All right. So, and I think that, you know, you know, not even in a super deep spiritual context, 
but the reality of it is like the doorway to our greatest frustration is through the people that we're the people that are close to our heart so whenever uh the enemy knows like i can't get to them i'm gonna get to somebody that's close to them to get to them because that's that's the easiest way um so you know in dealing with pain in relationships friendships friendships that don't turn out the right way friendships that out of you know just all of a sudden end um relationships that end breakups whatever the case is but then also too business relationships that don't go well you know those type of situations how you know reggie how have you dealt with uh letting go let's let's let let's just do let's just deal with this all right bing 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 bing. (laughs) 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 let's just deal with let's just deal with letting go wow of friendships doc you went straight that are no longer benefiting that are no longer benefiting us. How, mm. like, how has that been a thing? Yeah, <sighs> man, I, I'll be absolutely honest with you, man. I, I just got into a place where um, I am beginning to let go to the point to where I'm beginning to even unfriend people yeah. and I'll follow people. Yeah. And I, I neglected to do that because I have always lived my life for the pleasure of others. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I would say to myself, if I delete them, then how are they gonna feel? But yeah. then I had to say to myself, you know, Ooh, okay, if I, I keep them, you, right? I keep them. How am I? I got to do this for my mental yeah. health. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? I got to do this for myself. And finally, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm beginning to make decisions for my own well-being. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that has been a very, very hard process, man. I have always been loyal in relationships and when i say loyal it doesn't mean i've I've been perfect in relationships Mm -hmm. but i've been loyal Mm -hmm. so i can know whatever you do or whatever you've done or whoever you are there's nothing you can tell me about you once i connect with you that would make me disconnect from you yeah uh but i haven't found that in many cases matriculated back to me with others you know what i'm saying Um, and so in those cases where relationships have ended or relationships were unhealthy or or the likes, man, it's, I, I found it to be very, very challenging, man, to let go until now. Yeah. You know, yeah. until now. And if I be honest, I'm still dealing with that. Yeah. No, know? no. I, I mean, I mean, that's I mean, that's the whole concept of this, man. We want our patience to be honest. We're patients yeah. as well. Yeah. So we're being honest. Yep. Um, but the reality of everything that we're doing with painkillers is yep. for us to be honest about where we, where we are yeah. um, and know that. Uh, even though we may be open to communicate about it, to talk about it, and to share, does not mean that we got it all down. Packed. Absolutely, you know right. what I'm saying. Yeah. So, I mean, so it's, it's it's all it's all growing thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, but I love what you said. Like, you know, as far as like you've always cared about how it affected them, yeah. but not how it affected you, man. Yeah. I've been at that place more times than I want to admit. Yes, sir. Um, where I'm like, yo, like this is not benefiting me in any type of way. I'm not getting anything from yeah, it. Yeah. This is literally emotionally and mentally draining. Yeah. Uh, every time I see their name pop up on my phone, anxiety creeps yeah, in yeah, yeah, or yeah. I get angry or yeah. whatever the case is, but I don't want to cut them all the way off yeah. because I'm afraid of the narrative that they're going to build about me yeah. right. or how they're going to feel or whatever the case may be. So I care more about them than I did me. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, Marquis. Yeah, that's why they tell <laughs> us. Hey, that's why they tell us on the plane. You know, I like flying. So yeah, yes, sir. Put the mask over your Bro, face. Bro, that's it. Yes, that's sir. it. <laughs> yes, I think about that sir. every Everybody single time I think about it. Yes, sir. <laughs> every single time yes, I think about sir. it. Yes, yeah, sir. Put the mask on you. You got you. Then yeah. help somebody then else. Then help somebody yeah. else, man. And I think we're living in a culture where you see so many people get sick, die, collapse, yeah. have anxiety, depressed, yeah. everything because we're trying to save everybody but us. Yeah. Man. We're no good for nobody else if we're saving them and we're dying. Yep. That's man. so true, man. And it's the, and, but I, I I found that whenever we're at that place, what will happen is they'll let you die. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And <laughs> like, sing a song at your lead funeral. You and be like, <laughs> you know, that, that was so good to me. And then two weeks on, they done, they, you moved know, two weeks later, they moved yeah. on. Moved on. You know, they will, they will legit allow you to die. And yeah. then be like, all right, cool. Yeah. And then, Act like they didn't do a thing. Facts. Yeah, facts. You know, they didn't drain you. They didn't appreciate you. They facts. didn't do it. They, they're like, they're like, they didn't do nothing. Yeah. Like, um, but the reality of it is, man, like, if we don't protect ourselves, mm-hmm. nobody else is going to. We do have so. to, man. And then most of us, man, you know, this is painkiller. Right. Mm-hmm. Most right. of us are dealing with pain because of an individual more than likely. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? And mm. it can go all the way back to our childhood. It could be in our present, you yeah. know? So we have to address that. 
So I'm going to ask the hard question. Yes, sir. Who was the hardest person Ooh. you had to delete or cut off oh. when it came to after your assessment that this is not beneficial for me, my livelihood, Man. my health, my mental capacity? Like, and I'm going to bring it around full circle, but yeah. Mr. Painkiller Reggie, uh, <laughs> man, who was right. the hardest one, bro? <laughs> so, so you the patients <laughs> want to hear. Ooh. They listen. Uh, so you have to, you'll, you guys have to get a copy of my book that's coming out real soon. Oh, <laughs> low plug. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I I won't say any names. And absolutely not. Okay, and I, for sure. I you know that ain't, that ain't how we roll. Yeah, yeah, because we have you know the HIPAA law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We can't disclose but information. Can't disclose information. <laughs> there is a friend um, who uh, who had been a friend for a long time that you know I had just invested so we both did, um, but this friend obviously had disconnected from the relationship years yeah. before I actually got the point. Mm. Gotcha. Um, and and you know I listened to what you guys spoke about on uh, your last, last podcast. Um, and connecting with people who have similar issues as you, mm -hmm. you know, um, and really connecting for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And now after probably 10 years, I realized, you know what, that relationship probably should have never even happened. Mm. Wow. wow. And that was one of the hardest relationships to completely disconnect from. Yeah. 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 That's good. Man. Dr. A.D.? Um, for me, it would have to be a family member. You. you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, because I think that a lot of times we automatically assume yeah. growing up that if you have my last name, you have my best interest at heart. Wow. If we have the same blood. Hold on, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Legit. If like, you have my last, last name, you, you have, have my, my best interest. But that's mm. that's a that's a that's a falsehood. Yeah. That's a yeah. you know that's a lie. You know it is is what we is what we think. And you know I don't want to. I, you know, I don't want to super spiritualize it, Absolutely. but 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 the reality of it is when uh, Jesus says uh, those that desire to do the will of my father. Absolutely. Like yeah. those are yeah. my those, family. Those, yeah. That's my family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had to I had to realize that it's that I, you know, we can be we can have the same blood, mm -hmm. but we don't have the same convictions we don't have the right. same we don't have the same drive we don't have the same heart um and that that was hard man you know because uh for years i allow people to um I, I i think for me just in general i you know for years i would allow people to use me yeah for the sake of me being a good person yeah because i cared more about what people thought about me yeah than the own tr my own troop that I was yeah. sitting in for myself. Wow. I know who I am, Facts. but but because if you if you left, you know, an interaction with me, and you felt negative about me, then I try to fix how you looked at me. That's like it. you know That's what I'm it. saying? Like That's like it. I'd be like, oh, you know, no, no, please don't, please don't mm -hmm. look at me this way. I I'm mm -hmm. not I'm, I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad yeah. person. But not understanding that majority of people will paint you to be bad just because they didn't get what they wanted from you wow that doesn't make you bad that That's just means so that that just means you just didn't get what you wanted yeah. but people will paint that picture of yeah. you to say you know what like you you know what you're a bad person no and then tell everybody yeah. and then tell everybody yeah. their, their narrative and their perspective mm -hmm. based upon what they did not or what they could not get from you as an individual and that does not make you a bad person so and so man i just had to learn how to cut people off yeah. and not have you know uh, and not and not feel a type of way about it yeah. because you know what what happens when being there for you hurts me <laughs> like what like like yeah. like what happens then <laughs> you know what I, I think we need to talk about that more like really though yeah because just because uh what once was a connection is no more a connection uh it doesn't mean that either of the individuals are either wrong, yeah. terrible, yeah. evil. Yeah. Sometimes it's just an expiration date. Bingo. On, you know? Bingo. Like, like we have to be okay with being the remedy in the season yeah. wow. for somebody's problem. Y'all yeah. heard that patience? That's that's you know, like yeah. yo, like for for example, for example, I don't you know, I don't take night quill and day quill every day. Right. Mm -hmm. I took it when I was sick. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 yeah. After I am healed, yep. I don't need it. I don't need it anymore. Oh, bro. 
You see what I'm yeah. saying? So now so you're gonna have some debate right there, bro. I, I, but I, that's a good point. I get it. I, you know, like because because people are gonna say, well, oh, that, you use me. Yeah, you oh, use me. You use me. Like, yeah. No, 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 no. Because the reality of it yeah. is, I didn't use you. I paid for it. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And for me to see how effective you are, I had to be sick. Yeah. Gee. Yeah. And if I wasn't sick, we probably would have never even crossed paths. Bingo. And, and that's where we need to talk about identifying the purpose of these connections and the yeah. purpose of the relationships. Because yep. yeah. if we make that real clear, because I think one of the major yeah. problems we have on both sides is when someone who should be doctoring, pastoring, mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, someone begin begin they begin to want to befriend them. Yeah, of course. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Befriending yeah. someone you should be helping, mentoring, you know, yeah. or mentoring in yeah. some kind of way. And yeah. that becomes real toxic. It yeah. Does. I think that's when we put people in the wrong compartment in our lives. Yeah. Like yeah. I can go me and my me and my, my my doctor are cool. Like, you know, I go when I need to go. I I I text him and ask him a question about something I'm feeling, but he ain't calling me every day. He Absolutely. ain't coming to my house. We ain't going to the movies, but He's there when he's needed mm -hmm. and he's there to be a source for me in that compartment. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking him out of that compartment trying to make him my best friend because he gives me good, healthy advice. Yeah. Right? And sometimes we do the opposite in relationships and friendships is we connected as friends. We really cool. We like a lot of the same similar things and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden we try to put that person in a relationship compartment and we don't realize that just because we good in a friendship doesn't mean we're supposed to be in a relationship Bingo. Right. or vice versa. You Bingo. Know? And I think that's a key right. point. Bingo. So th there's two things I want to piggyback on back to your question. One, when you asked about, you know, the hardest relationship the hardest to relationship. connect to, yeah. connect from, I man, I got to say some of it is like some of my leadership, gotcha. you know, like yeah. some leadership in church. Yeah. Um, I don't know any other way to say this, just but say I it. just think at, at a certain point you grow beyond, yeah. you know, the connect that particular connection now I say loyal to, I know you you yeah. know I I'll always acknowledge what you've done in my life but at yeah. a certain point you know when I graduate from the from preschool to to elementary school you know yeah. it doesn't make sense for me to continue to go to my preschool classes yeah. you know good. what I'm saying if I go from the ninth grade to the 10th grade then it's time for me to have a 10th grade mentor or yeah. a 10th grade type of leadership yeah. and I think that that was another uh, issue but I want to ask you guys how did you guys separate like um uh, uh or keep the the separation from befriending people who you should have been mentoring or vice versa mm. i know for me man i am just a, a freaking stickler with repeating over and over and over my in my head who this person is and what my assignment is mm -hmm. so like for example like as soon as i feel like my guard's coming down i have to catch myself remind myself nope this is what the assignment is this is what this person's supposed to be here for the second thing is I got crazy boundaries. Mm. Like my That's number word. is private, listed with the private with the uh, phone company. My I don't give out my emails and stuff like that. Like I ain't gonna be inboxing you back on social media. Like I just have crazy boundaries, and I think unless you put up those hedges intentionally, you're always gonna get fed to the wolves. Mm -hmm. So I learned that for a long time ago, man. Like I grew up under mentors who. At the time, it didn't make sense. Like, they would say stuff like, oh, don't have no social media or don't do this or don't do that. I'm like, that's so weird. But then I started realizing as I grew, grew in, 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 in business and in leadership and all that kind of stuff, I said, oh, those was hedges. Yep. Those were boundaries. Those yeah. were protections. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I keep it that way. Um, and then I keep people around me who can check me. Mm -hmm. So if they seeing me with certain people and they seeing me going a certain way, they be like, hey, bruh. I want to ask you about that relationship. What's going on with that? Why mm -hmm. are you always with them? Why are you always over there? Like that yeah. kind of stuff. So that accountability also helps. Yeah, man. And, I, and that's something I didn't do well with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, um, I didn't do well with boundaries. I would allow people to be real close to me because that was my leadership style. Yeah. You know, like um, I was more of, you know, the person that would do life with you. You know what I'm saying? More than I would be just lead, give you what you need to go. And, I mean, get you what you needed. And then, you know, I see you next time. Um, and what I learned over time is that the more I was lax on boundaries or didn't yeah. put them in their proper place, then they felt um, they, they they begin to get very entitled. Mm -hmm. And um, my my definition for it is a luxury that it that becomes expected is entitlement. 
So like if I like access Always to me, drop in <laughs> 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 access, access, you know, access to it's me. It's a privilege. Te- that, that's yeah. a privilege. Yep. Texting me, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, and, and then you, because you weren't checked the first time, you mm-hmm. start continuing mm-hmm. to do it mm-hmm. or you disrespect me. And then you weren't checked the first time you continue to do it. That's now a luxury that you now taken the liberty of. Now yeah. you are in entitlement. Yeah. Now, um, so man, for me, it's like I've had to go back to reset yeah. um, boundaries, mm-hmm. and then those that did not respect them, I had to cut them off. Yeah. The only people that are mad about your boundaries are people that wanted to abuse them in the first place. Yeah, the motives. Yeah. yeah, like 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 if you like if you tell me, hey, you know, hey, D man, you know, uh, you know, man, I'm asking you, man, you know, don't. I know you be up late working, but don't text me after 10 p.m. Bingo. And I'd be like, all right, cool. If I'm mad about that, that means that <laughs> yeah. I was expecting to abuse that. Exactly. Yeah. The exactly. only people that are mad about your boundaries are people that want to use. That, yeah. That, yeah. That, that want to abuse them. They That's have the that only ulterior people. motive. That's the only yeah. people, bro. Like, the only people. The only people. Yeah. Like, and and I had to learn that, like, the hard way because, because man, I was giving people, I was, like, legit giving people access to me mm-hmm. that I was like, I was like, why am I giving these people access to me like this? Because I was trying to win people over by my personality Bingo. and I was trying to win mm-hmm. people over by my leadership style. Yeah. But then when I started to go back to re- like to create those boundaries to say, no, you can't do this after a certain time or no, don't do this or don't do this. Then they would get upset. But I had to realize like the only people that's mad about those boundaries are people that want that was that was yeah. benefiting from the abuse yeah. of me not having it. Yeah. Yeah. So the moment you don't have any boundaries. And you start creating those boundaries, mm-hmm. you gonna see who 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 was benefiting from you not having boundaries. Facts. So when you're wounded and you get healed, you're gonna see the people that were yeah. benefiting from you being wounded. Being absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, like 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 yo, know, like if you <clears throat> the you know, like people say out of time, the money isn't in the remedy, the money is in the medicine. Absolutely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you enough to keep you sick. So to I keep you keep coming back, back to me. Yeah. And that's certain relationships, relationships are that same way. Yeah. I want you to keep coming yeah. back to me. I don't want you to be healed. Yeah, that kind of goes goes back to what I was saying about certain leaderships. Um, I think because they get a high, and I'll be honest, I've done it too. Mm-hmm. Because they get a high off of being needed. Yeah. Yes, man. Yeah. They they won't put you in a position to really be healed yep. yeah. and to really grow. Yeah. And when you do, yeah. you know, there's yeah. a it's a problem there. You yeah. know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that goes back to what we talked about in the first podcast about that codependency, like. They need that dependency to be needed by them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've learned that, you know, you talked about like, you know, as, as a, in church, like I learned that so many people find church as an outlet because they can't control no other area of their life. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. church is the only place they can control mm-hmm. people. They can get people to do what they want them to do. But then they go home and don't nobody listen to them. Don't wow. nobody comply. Wow. Don't yep. nobody. So they come to an a institution or a, a space where they can finally get what they do not get. Yeah. Wow. And that's a lot crazy. of times it's relationships. And that's why in church, everybody, oh, you my brother, oh, you my sister. That's one of the things I hate. Yep. <laughs> me too, bro. Like, I, I, I <laughs> get too. the I concept, but I'm like, yeah. bro, you only calling me that because you won't even have a relationship with your brother at home or yep, you don't yeah. have a relationship with your mom. Like, and then you got people that's like, I used to have people that's like two times my age calling me dad and mm-hmm. pops and that kind of stuff. And I used to be like, I'm like young enough to be your son, but they, don't get it at, at home so they try to get it from here mm-hmm. and that comes down to that whole relationship abuse too because mm-hmm. then soon as soon as soon i'm your pop as long as i'm patting you on your back yeah. and giving you praise but as soon as it's time to Listen. discipline you yep you're seasoned up yep. you yep. call somewhere else yep and then you bad mouth me everywhere yeah. But you ain't talking about the time I paid your bills, man, that I bought you the man. car, that Come I bought on. groceries, right. that I. Right. But that goes back to that, wow. you know? No, nah, for real. And wow. I think for me, like, you know, yours was a friend, yours was a family member. My hardest. Yeah, what was yours? Delete, breakup, or cutoff? Let's hear it. Was the false version of me, bro. Ooh. Ooh. It was the it was the Ooh. version of me, bro, that everybody in church knew. It was the version of me that everybody knew since I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And like these last two years, it's like everybody who never saw this side of me, like, who is this man? Where did he come from? Wow. What's going on with you? Why are you changing this and that? And what I learned in this season, bro, is that when I was trying to cut off other people, I was still left with that false version of me. So when I cut off this false version of me, instead of taking mm. so much time to deal with the external people, 
the external people started to fall off yep, by themselves. Yep. Mm-hmm. They stopped calling, they stopped texting, they stopped trying to hit, hit me up because they didn't like who I really was. Mm. And when I've started- Actually who by, you really have right, always been. always been. Yeah. But the church taught me how to how not to be that. Whoa, man. How to be something else. Jesus Christ. But now I'm like, I don't care now. Like I'll post my car. Like the church told me, the church told me don't post your car. Don't, you can't drive this. Man, you can't bring it to the church. Like, man, bro. and so we walking around pretending not to have things and not to be certain man. things because of all that. We're going to have to go over our time on this one right here. Cause like, I feel something <laughs> like, like this. Like, like for real. You get what I'm saying? Man, but, but, right. but, but I'm, I'm telling you, man, the reality of it is, is that we can, and all of us have been in the seat of senior pastor. Yeah. Mm. We can coach you, preach you, prophesy to you, to live your best life, mm-hmm. to have everything God wants for you. Yep. We can we can teach you how to do that, yeah. but we can't do but that. We, can't do, we yeah. can't do that. And as soon as we do it, we can't drive it. Yeah. yeah, we can't live it. Yeah, because as soon as we do it, oh, they take it. Yeah. yeah. To be continued next week, right here on Painkillers. Don't forget, you can join us every Monday night on Medication Mondays on Clubhouse at 9 p.m. It's an extended conversation from the Painkillers Podcast. Clubhouse, Monday nights at 9 p.m. Medication Mondays.